Hey, this is Josh Brom with Life Report again. This is part two of a, of a three-part response to Valerie, who lives in Silver Lake, Kansas, who's asking me for help um, responding to some of the things that her pro-choice Christian dad told her in a recent uh, debate on abortion. So I'm just going to get right to it. Um, if uh, Watch part one if you want kind of an introduction to the situation they're in, but I'm not going to rehash that here. Here's one of the things uh, that Valerie's dad said. He said, a fetus is not a human being. It has the potential to be a human being. Okay, when someone says this, I'm going to ask them what the unborn is before it becomes a human being. Um, because a potential X must be an actual Y. Let me say that again. A potential X has to be an actual Y. And so if he's making a biological claim here, um, and this is a little bit tricky because I think it seems like from the quotes that I see that he doesn't think the unborn is biologically human nor valuable. Um, so let's just, I'm just, let's just assume that my interpretation is correct. Um, if he's saying he's not biolog is even biologically human yet, but it becomes biologically human later, I'm going to ask, what is it biologically before it becomes human? Because it has to be something. It's too easy uh, and oversimplified to just say it's a potential human. Okay, what is it now? It's, it's not a frog, right? It's not a cat. What, what is it before, like what species is it before it turns into the species Homo sapiens? If, if what they mean is not biological, and this is more common, although maybe not where, where Valerie's dad is at, but more common is people would say, well, it's a potential person. Right? It's, it's human, it's, of the, it's homo sapiens, but it's not valuable person like you and me yet. But it's a potential person, if it becomes born and uh, can you know, do X, Y, and Z, then it's a person like you and me. Um, then I'm going to respond a little bit differently, and I'm, I'm going to respond with their, with their person uh, claim that it's not a person yet. I'm going to want to know why. What, what, why are their criteria so important? What, what, why are their criteria... The, the things that make this not a human being. And by the way, what does that do to the idea of equal humans, you know, it, 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 all humans being equally valuable, uh, which is generally what people want to think, or at least say they think. Um, so I'm going to want to know, what do you mean by potential human being? Then uh, the dad goes on to say, you are confusing things. Whether the fetus is a human being or not has nothing to do with whether abortion is moral or not. These are separate issues. Separate issues, whether the unborn is human and whether abortion is moral or not. And I'm going to ask why. Maybe you're right. Maybe they are separate issues. For example, if the dad is making a bodily rights claim that because uh, of the special relationship between the unborn child and the mother's body, for her to have complete bodily autonomy uh, or, or at least the kind of bodily autonomy that everybody should have, she should have the right to abort. I would agree then. If that's where they're coming from, you're right. Then uh, the discussion on whether the unborn is human or not um, is not the, the, the biggest priority here. Although, I'll just say, it's important to note that I think most pro-choice people that use the bodily rights arguments also don't think the unborn is a full person. Um, sometimes they will say, I'll concede for the sake of debate that it's a human. It doesn't matter because of bodily rights. They don't usually actually think it's a person, and, and maybe if they actually did, they might have a different view. Or, I mean, you'll find out. If you kind of, uh, if you, you've, you kind of beat them on the bodily rights end, I don't mean, you know, you know what I mean, if you win the debate, if they, are, if they concede the ground, you convince them, you persuade them um, that their view of bodily rights is not correct in this case or whatever. Um, then if they've, they're still pro-choice, it's probably because they think it's us also not a person, or at least not a full person like you and me. So uh, I'm going to ask, okay, what are the other issues at play? Um, and I might trot out a toddler. If you're not familiar with that concept, go to Stand a Reason uh, or Read the Case for Life by Scott Klusendorf, and, and they explain um, that what trotting on a toddler means. But a lot of times people just throw these things out that uh, that are just showing that they they don't think the unborn is a person and that's the problem and we can show that that's that's the issue at, at play here, um, which is it would be important here because it sounds like that's what the data is specifically saying is not true. He's saying it's not about personhood. Personhood doesn't even matter. It doesn't matter what it is. It doesn't have anything to do with whether abortion is moral or not. Well, let's see. Let's 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 test that out. Um, then he goes on to say, yes, the fetus is a stage in development in the human life cycle. The cycle be being adults, and then sex cells, and then fertilized eggs, and then fetus, and then a human being growing to adult. 
And he says, then we start the cycle again. At no time is there a non-living entity, but a human being does not exist until it can perform all the life functions. Okay, there's a lot here. I'm going to try to move fast. First of all, it's important for pro-life people to not ground their views only, solely, in the unborn being biologically alive. Or else his argument does kind of refute you. Uh, because clearly there are living things that are not valuable persons that should have the right to live. For example, sex cells and other uh, somatic cells like my skin cells um, and trees and other, I mean, you know, some people, I don't, people really like trees. I, I'm not saying trees are bad. I just, I'm not saying, I don't think they're equal to humans. Uh, so th there's living things that are not persons. Our, our view is that the unborn is not just living, but it's a living human organism and that all living human organisms are persons. I think there might be persons that are not living human organisms, like angels, for example. But um, I, my view is that all living human organisms are persons. And so uh, it's more than just a being alive. It's, and, it's so, and, and this is where it comes in, like sex cells, when he brings up sex cells, I'm going to say, no, that's not, you know, I know that's kind of how human beings continue to reproduce. That's not the question in play here. Um, the question, you know, about the unborn entity, there's a difference between sex cells and a, a, a newly con conceived human embryo or a zygote. Um, I don't use the term fertilized egg, that's a misnomer, there's no such thing because the, the oocyte or egg, um, when it's fertilized, it, the egg dies and the sperm dies too, it becomes a new organism. So it's not technically ever a fertilized egg, although I know what he means. Um, so it, yeah, there's sperm and egg, they come together, sperm and oocyte come together, and then the sperm and egg die and you end up with a zygote, a living human organism, uh, and it is now different than sex cells. It's good, it, it's parts are working for the good of its own whole now, which is different than sex cells. So, you know, a, a sperm is part of my body and somatic cells are part of my body, working for the good of my whole, if you will. Um, Scott Klusendorf has, has talked about this a lot. Um, and that's different than a zygote. A zygote doesn't act like that. It's not working for the good of the mother's body, although there are things about pregnancy that are beneficial for the woman's body, and there's things that, that the woman's body does that are beneficial to the, to, to, to the embryo too, but that's not like the purpose. The embryo is not, it's, not, it's no longer like an organ. It's not like the mother has this new organ, um, like a new kidney or something like that. That's not what's going on here. It's, it acts very differently, and we can, an embryologist can tell the difference. This is also where you would bring up the Polaroid thing that you mentioned last time. Here's what the Polaroid thing is. Richard Stith uh, has an article, and I'm gonna, I'll am gonna i link to it in, in the description, but he says one of the reasons that some pro-choice people think that pro-life people are crazy is because they think that human beings are constructed like a car uh, on a factory line. Because the, you can't answer the question, when is it a car, like, right? You know, like, you know, some people are going to say it's when the engine's there. Some people are going to say when everything's there and when it's driving off the runway. But no one says it's when the first two pieces of steel get welded together, right? And so you, since many pro-choice people, some pro-choice people, think that humans are constructed like cars, they think it's crazy when pro-life people like me see a zygote <laughs> at one day old and say, that's a valuable human. They're like, you're nuts. It might be some, it may, might be person somewhere in the middle or maybe at birth, uh, but it's obviously not right in the beginning. And Richard Smith points out in his article that humans aren't constructed, they're developed. It's different. They're more like Polaroid photos. Um, and Stephanie Gray, I think, actually tells this story best. He's like, you know, if you're on Loch Ness, uh, and you see Nessie, the Loch Ness monster, pokes his head up, and you take a picture with the only you know you brought a Polaroid camera. Like, why would you bring that instead of you know your iPhone or whatever? But anyway, you brought a Polaroid camera because you're really into old things, so antiques, antique cameras. You take a Polaroid. They actually have new Polaroid cameras, by the way. You, I've got one in my office for, for the purpose of t teaching this concept in front of live audience. But anyway, um, you take a Polaroid photo. The thing comes out. It's all blurry, and your friend of the boat takes a look at your picture, Nessie is now under the water again, and they see like this is smudge, and they're like, oh man, this is horrible, it totally didn't come out, and then they rip it into shreds and throw it in the water. You would be understandably really frustrated because you had the picture, everything was there, you just couldn't see it yet. It needed to develop from within. 
and that's what embryos do. Embryos don't, uh, there's not a heart added to an embryo at 22 days. It develops a heart from within at 22 days. Um, and, and, since, and Richard Sith argues that this is a morally relevant distinction. Uh, and so that's where, if that might be the reason that your dad doesn't think it's an, or, an organism, is because he thinks that the organism is that the uh, that the human is constructed and not developed. That can be really important for people. A um, couple other things: the dad said to Valerie, "If you wish to classify a fetus as a human being, what is a definition of a human being?" I'm going to say, biologically speaking, I believe a human being is a living human organism. That's it, living human organism. That's my definition um, right now. But when I say human being, usually I also mean something more. I don't mean just what it is biologically, but I mean something valuable. I mean, I, and basically sometimes what I'll say, I think my, I think my brother Tim is the one who, who said it like this once and I liked it. He kind of said something like you and me and President Obama and the other six or seven billion entities like that around the earth. Like we have all this data um, and all these people that all have something in common, a human nature, that's what I mean. I don't know uh, what to call that besides a human being. Um, it's, it's all these special entities, special humans, special persons, you know, whatever. Um, I don't know what to call that besides a human being. So, okay, I'm going to stop there and respond to a couple more things, including what do you say when someone says that their mind is closed on an issue in, the, in part three of this series. Thanks for watching.